Hello everyone, today we are going to review the movie Christine from 1989, or was it 83? Let me just double check that while I'm talking about it here a little bit more. Uh, so this movie follows a kid, high school kid named Ernie, who's definitely uh, the typical um, 80s or 90s or even now I guess kind of nerdy kid that uh, is easy to pick on and easy to manipulate and take control of. Uh, as you can see from his parents, his parents don't let him do anything. Um, he's bullied at school. Oh, it was from 1983. Okay. He's bullied at school. Uh, he has one friend who's on the football team. Uh, and that's really about it, is his one friend. Uh, he seems to have... Uh, no real social connection with anybody else besides his one buddy whose name was Dennis. So Dennis is his only friend and seems to be like his kind of protector in a certain way because every time it seems that uh, Arnie's going to get bullied, Dennis steps in to help him out because obviously Arnie isn't the toughest or coolest kid in the world. So he's an easy target to pick on, right? Uh, unfortunately, that does change when he sees this 1950s Plymouth and decides that he's going to buy it and fix it up. And I guess it's kind of like his own way of saying that he can do anything. It kind of gives him this sense of power in the beginning until the car comes to life and starts killing people. Uh, pretty much anybody that touches the car that isn't Ernie dies in this movie. Except for his... Uh, well, he does end up breaking up with her. But, uh... Lee... Who plays his girlfriend in part of this movie. She's like the... Pretty, I wouldn't say she's the most popular girl at school, but she's definitely the prettiest girl at school. Or at least that's what she's supposed to be in this movie. And, uh... Arnie ends up dating her when he be when he fixes up this car the first time, and Dennis gets injured during a football game when he sees them together because he's not paying attention. Uh, and then slowly, uh, the only thing that Arnie begins to care about is Christine, the car, and not anybody else. And uh, Dennis finds out information from the previous owner of the car that several people had died in the car. And then when, I guess, they went to get rid of it, the car showed up three weeks later uh, on its own, I guess, was kind of the interpretation you were supposed to take that as, because the car goes out and starts killing all the people that uh, destroyed it the first time. So Arnie builds it. The kids that bullied him at school decide that they're going to go destroy the car. The car literally builds itself back up. By this time, Arnie's kind of possessed. Um, and then the car goes out and kills these kids, or one of the kids, in the middle of the night, and I guess the next night it goes back out and kills more people at a gas station. And, and I'm not sure whether Ernie was in the car for any of these interactions or not, but I think it was just the car that was coming to life, because at the end it comes to life even after Ernie has passed away due to being flung over the windshield of the car and into the arms of... Uh, Lee, his ex at this point in the movie, near the end. Uh, I guess she's kind of more gearing towards being with Dennis because they had some sort of connection uh, near the beginning of the movie when he was in the library and asked her out first. So I guess maybe in a sense he was kind of jealous of Arnie when Arnie just started to become a little bit more uh, forward and... Uh, Forward isn't the right word. He became a little more self-centered and kind of definitely more of an asshole, I would say. He became the thing that he hated, I guess, in this movie. Because he kind of pushed everybody away and he uh, really gave it back to his parents once he had gained a little bit of confidence. Um, because there was supposed to be no swearing, no cars, so he ends up putting his car somewhere else. Eventually he just basically takes control of the household. He becomes the person 
even though he doesn't own the house, he kind of runs the show, I guess you could say, uh, due to the fact that his parents have basically become afraid of him, including his dad, who grabs him and throws him up against the wall, but Arnie just kind of overpowers him and says, I'm going to bed, and his dad looked like completely terrified in that scene, so, I mean, this was supposed to be a horror movie, but, um, but it is from the 1980s, uh, I mean, for its time, oh my god, this movie probably would have been absolutely terrifying, because I guess maybe it was like, I don't know whether, like what era of cars this would have been, I guess computers, yeah, I guess the whole computer era wouldn't have been for another 10 to 15 years, basically. Well, as advanced as it could have been anyway. Uh, but I guess a car coming to life in 1983 might have been a little more terrifying than it was if this movie had been made today. <clears throat> Anyhow, so eventually Arnie and the car kind of become one, was my interpretation anyway. Because at the very end scene, when he's going up against his friend Dennis and his ex Lee, he is actually in the car at this point, and he's driving it himself. And then when he dies, the car comes back to life. But unfortunately, Dennis is able to run it over and kill it, or at least they thought. Uh, but at the end of the movie, there's this guy with a boombox that goes by. They think it's Christine playing the music again. Uh, it's not, it's just the guy with the boombox. And then the opening scene had uh, Bad to the Bone playing. And at the end, the car, one car piece kind of moves because they completely crushed it. And that song starts playing again. And at the very beginning of the movie, um, one interesting fact that I thought was, or one fact that I thought was kind of interesting, I should say, was that it was the only red uh, Plymouth that came off of that line. All the rest of them were white. That one was red. So I'm not sure whether that was just something that the manufacturers did to make the red Plymouth like kind of like a uh, collector's item, I guess. Because when Arnie first sees it, he automatically knows that he has to buy it to fix it up. That's going to be his car and nobody else's. Sorry, I thought I was hearing things in the background. House makes noises. <clears throat> um, so what was I saying? Yeah, when he first sees it, he knows it's going to be his car. Um, Dennis tries to talk him out of it, which was probably, in the end, the better option anyway. Um, and by the time the cop arrives to question Arnie about what's happening, he's become sort of arrogant and keeps asking this cop why he's in his life, or why he keeps tampering with his life. And unfortunately, the cop was probably just trying to help him, but of course, Arnie had become too arrogant and too connected to his car, and just pre pretty much shoved everybody out of the outs outside, except for Dennis, who he ends up almost killing in the end anyway, so, I mean, it didn't really matter. N nobody, uh, Arnie didn't care about anybody except for Arnie by the end of the movie, and obviously Christine, because you can kind of see throughout the movie how um, having this connection with his car takes over his head, because there's one scene where he's in Lee's driveway, and he goes to start it, and it won't start, and he basically talks the car into starting again, and there was another scene where he's in the garage, and he says, show me what you can do, and the car, I'm not sure whether he was building it back up, and it was just like, showing the animation or whether the car was actually building itself back up in that scene because it does do that in a couple other scenes where the car just regenerates itself so it's almost like a transformer <clears throat> in a in a sense but obviously it wasn't quite that extreme but you get what i mean uh, but the animation for this movie um was actually really well done I know they all they did was just probably destroy the car and then obviously reverse animate it to make it look like it, the car was building itself back up. That seems like probably the easiest way to do it anyway. Or who knows, maybe they just had a bunch of Plymouths made for this movie because I don't think there were a lot of scenes in this movie where I'm like, that car, there's no way it can be the same vehicle that went through all this stuff. They must have had a, They must have had a couple of them anyway. Uh, but yeah, this movie was really well done for its time. I mean, this movie's 1983, so 
38 years old, if I'm doing my math correctly on that. I might be wrong on that. But anyway, 10 out of 10 on this movie, uh, as far as horror movies go, um, it wasn't really... It was more suspenseful and kind of like a thriller, I guess, in a way. I mean, it did have some horror elements, obviously, where the car just comes to life and kills people because that's not normal, but I guess it was kind of more of a psychological uh, horror movie, kind of like It or American Psycho that I've watched rec like in the past. I guess I just watched American Psycho again recently, but I guess technically that's still in the past, right? So, <clears throat> so it's, yeah, it's more of a psychological horror movie, which I actually like more because it really makes you think about what's going on. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I think that's all I have to say about this film. Really well done film. Uh, I wouldn't really say it keeps you guessing because you can kind of, kind of predict what's going to happen. Obviously, from the conversation that Dennis and the old man had, you knew that Arnie was going to become too connected with the car and just basically shove everybody out. Uh, so yeah, destroying the car was the perfect ending. Unfortunately, Arnie dying wasn't really what Dennis and Lee wanted to happen. They wanted to be able to save him, but uh, the cop did say some people just can't be saved. So unfortunately, Arnie dies with the car, I guess. Or maybe there was supposed to be a sequel, I'm not sure, because it kind of left with a cliffhanger ending of the car moving a little bit even though it looked like it was crushed into a complete cinder block, basically. <clears throat> but anyhow, that's all I have to say about this film. So please like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below your thoughts on this film if you've seen it. If not, please go watch it, because it is a good film. I know it's old, but sometimes old films just stand the test of time, and I would say this one was definitely one of them. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye for now.